so officially good afternoon to you all because it is around 12 20 but also good morning got a good sleep in today this time around i believe the medication is kicking in in terms of making me feel better because like i can actually breathe now <laughs> which is good so i was able to get a good night's rest but again my natural body clock woke up around like 7 30 so i just do it around took a quick shit and then went to bed back at like around 8 30 then woke up around 11.45 getting my day started. Nice day out in Vegas. It's not super cold, but it's not super hot. Sun is out, which is great. We are heading to Bagel Mania. So we're gonna, gonna try there out. I feel like it's a little unique spot, a little hot spot that I gotta try out. And I can tell now with my body cues, even though I did have those two big pieces of pizza, I am still relatively like content, like I don't need to eat. But my body is also telling me that if I want to eat, I can eat. So I've got an appetite for food. I also don't have to eat. I reckon if I just have like a something from Starbucks, that would be enough for me right now. But again, I am on a holiday, so I am going to overindulge a little bit, which is not a necessity, but I am going to do it. <laughs> here we go, food is here. End up getting killed fries, good for once. It's actually seasoned. Here we go. Try a little bit of this potato salad. That'll be a nice change of the taste palette. I think they're like special mustard sauce. I don't know, we're gonna give it a shot with the chips. Look. Mm. It actually tastes like the mustard I had when I came with my dad and my mom ages ago to America. It actually tastes good. Let's go into the main event. I feel pretty excited about this one. It's real good. It's good cheese pool though. Here we go. We get a bit more of the actual bagel. I'll be honest, pretty good. I like how the cheese is like super melted too. It's not something you see too often. This is pretty good. Well done. Very, very solid meal. Ended up paying 21 USD. It is pricey, but for the amount that came, that was a pretty massive portion, I'm not gonna lie. I feel pretty full. I definitely need to take a massive ship before I go train, but it's now 1.30. What an absolute vibe. Blessed. Absolutely blessed. Well, we're about to go ahead and get started with the 3.30 p.m. class. I have no idea what to expect, but let's get straight into it. All right, wrestling class is all done. Ended up being a full proper wrestling class. It was good. It was like one or two techniques. A very, very sneaky um, sneaky one where if you're throwing the hand up against the wall and you go to knee him, you move the hand, you go to knee him, and then they try to knee you back. Cheeky little knee tap run. Take down, that was cheeky. That one stuck with me the most, but after class, I'm staring at this thing. It says the man in the arena. Essentially, it's saying the individual who dares greatly to try. Face covered in blood, dust, and like scars and whatever. The man that's trying would rather dare to try than be with those individuals who don't even try at all. With those cold, timid souls, as I quote, who neither no victory nor defeat. So I feel like that's kind of me in a sense where like, yeah, I've been on this little bit of a losing streak. I haven't been winning as such, but I've been trying, man. I've been trying and I'm still going. And I'm still going and I'm enjoying every single step of the journey. Because the journey matters, as my coach, one of my grappling coaches, Burak Salman says. You know, that this one could be kind of deep, man in the arena. And I feel like that's me. I'm currently the man in the arena. Soon, inevitably, I will be able to, as it says, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who at best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement, and he who at worst, if he fails, at least fares while daring greatly. So it's a cool saying that I'm taking on board, especially with today. And I think that we all should too. All right, so I'm gonna have my training, rehydrate a little bit, shower up, and then head straight to Temp Planet. I don't know, today I don't know if I'll be doing all the live training at Temp Planet, because um, the, the pizza that I ate is kind of stuffing up my stomach, I'm not gonna lie. We'll see how we go. There was no big notable names today at training as well. It was more so all the Fury Fighters, I mean, the only person that's here right now is Casey O'Neill, but she's doing her own fight week pads over there in the Octagon. Cam O'Neill is there too, and one of the announcers are there too from Australia. Other than that, yeah, there's no proper UFC fighters, even the coach today. I think he's another coach. There was no Eric Nixon or anything for that matter. So they're sparring tomorrow at 3.30, and that's about it. That's all that's left that extreme. I don't think there's a Friday class, but all sus. I've only got three days left here, so we've got to make the most of it, yeah. That's what I keep on remembering, like I kind of want to just like chill and relax, but at the same time, I know I'm never going to be able to have this opportunity. Okay, let's not say never. The, the chance of having this opportunity again is very slim, unless I make the most of it, which I'm trying to, but 
trying to make the most of what I have right now and the opportunity that I have to gain as much knowledge as I can in the career that I want to pursue and in the journey that I want to pursue so far and deep in. Gain as much knowledge and get better because everyone in Australia doesn't have what I have. Same thing as what GSP said about training with the individuals um, around you. Even though that they're so-called competitors, it's something that the outside can't get. Same thing here, I know that people in Australia can't get this. So when I come back there, I'm gonna have a lot of value. Not only just as skill-wise, but knowledge-wise. And um, me as a person, I'm gonna be able to upgrade a lot of the individuals that are at the gym also by sharing this knowledge I'm doing them because it's exactly what Lee Rivers did he learned whatever he learned in America came back to England or went back to England spread it along with his people and look at him now he's the champ maybe I can do the same and replicate that all right so that's my portion of today's training done I did we did a solid hour of drilling it was more so guard stuff guard into X guard and then guard into reverse X guard and then guard, pulling guard into reverse X guard into the leg entanglements and then going from the leg entanglements to passing the guard pen itself so I left it at that because again I can't remember I'm on holiday I don't need to train hard like it's for a fight like I feel good fit whatever but I don't need to overdo it and I feel like I'm just kind of getting into that overdoing it phase I'm also trying to pick up on new skills and new knowledge which is exactly what I want to do now to move into the specific training segment of the training then they're going to do rounds but again I didn't want to overdo it because I just trained literally at extreme trained really hard and then if I train really hard here I'm going to do shit tomorrow Again, here what I'm also looking for is the developing those skills. So on the way to Starbucks, I made a quick stop into this little joint here. And I was interested in this custard thing because it's their version of ice cream but it's got a special twist to it, I'm not too sure. There's like this Oreo cookie sandwich but it's got the custard ice cream that they're talking about on the inside of it. Supposedly the custard refers to a type of ice cream. And guys, my smell senses are back so the tablets are working. That reminds me, I've got to take my tablet. I'll do that in a sec. Okay, so all I smell right now is like a hint of ice cream, but mainly with I smell like the Oreo element of it, the cookie. Jeez, this looks huge in the camera. Okay, let's give it a shot. Here we go. Okay. Best way I can say it is you know how when you have an ice cream then it's fresh and it holds its shape, whereas like, I don't know, 50 seconds later it starts melting and gets all gooey. This custard thing holds its texture and holds its shape. Even me pushing into it, it doesn't like go in as much. It holds and preserves, preserves its shape. It's, it's interesting. So if you guys are the type of people that like ice cream when it's fresh and it's not melted and it's not ooey gooey, then um, you'll be a big fan of custard. Their version of custard is like a ice cream, I guess. I definitely say very, very interesting. I'm watching some of Andy's kids, bro. They're all little ninjas, bro. All of them are little ninjas. It was so cool to see. But honestly, I was gonna ask him some tips and whatnot, but from what I saw from coming a little bit early, is he generally runs it like I do. It's just like a bunch of adult stuff. He doesn't play games and stuff. The game idea that I've seen comes from AOJ, other YouTuber. Yeah, genuinely, you can see there's like a big brother element with the kids and Andy. Look at him as like a old brother mess around joke with them and whatnot. But when it comes time for training, they're super serious, they're diligent, and they do the task at hand. But they do really sick, they do really good. So that was really cool to see. I like that. There's definitely some notes that I took on in terms of how he conducted it. Uh, he had three other coaches there with him, but he was mainly facilitating and coaching that young superstar that I shared on my story. And then the other three two coaches were just going around making sure that each children was alright but they were giving each child extra attention to just like really staying with them whereas at Extreme Couture what I saw was like they'd give a bit move give a bit and move and that's how I've been doing it and that's how we've been doing it at XFC when it comes to the kids over here they're giving like extra diligent time but the thing is when they're doing that the other kids aren't fucking around and messing around they're actually doing the task at hand as well so I don't know how he's got them on the wraps like that so I'm still gonna try and learn that part. But yeah, that pizza made me have like a massive coma, bro. Sluggishness, a bit of bleh. All right, so on the way back to the hotel, let me fix my hair really quick, that looks really weird. Yeah, it's not gonna fix, but. On the way back to the hotel, obviously I took an Uber, but I have probably had one of the best interactions with a human being, the most wholesome interaction with the human being, and 100% the best Uber driver I've ever had. Reason being is because this guy was, he's old, but he's not old. So he's a 44 year old man, him and his wife have three kids, and adopted two kids 
Uh, most of them are older in their 25s and he was just such a like sounds really weird because like a guy to say it but it was really really beautiful to hear his story man he's so generous so kind and um, just what he's done a lot so genuine so genuine and I was just very inquisitive in terms of his story and asking him a lot of things about the perspective of the adopted child and how it is for him and his family and all that stuff and uh, it was just such a beautiful and amazing wholesome experience for me it made me think about my family a lot it honestly didn't just thinking about my mom and like it was just so positive and it put me in a happy place happy place and smiling kind of missing my mom and dad and my brother it was just a really really wholesome experience all right good morning it's a new day we are over here at the laundry map and I'm doing my laundry. This one, so far, cost me $2. Very cheap, very good. And with this, it's an additional three, so five bucks, I guess. We're washing the washing. Good day. We've got like a good 30 or so minutes to kill. I'm gonna grab something to eat, and then yeah. What's with this hair, man? I have no idea what this freaking stupid hair is. Stop by Subway, which is right across the road from the laundromat. Pick myself up the cheeky six inch, and an oatmeal cookie that looks pretty shit. So let's take a bite, let's try it out. Overall, with the cookie and the 6 inch, it costed $8. There you go ladies and gentlemen, $8 of Subway. It gets the job done, you know. But even the people here, it's like I went to that laundromat in uh, Austin. They all speak Mexico, I believe so at least. And now let's get into the oatmeal raisin cookie. Very small, very much like meh. I'll give it to it. That's good. Now we transition from that bad boy to this bad boy. Drying out our shoes. So I ended up having a lot more washing than what I anticipated. And normally what I've been doing in the past, I've just been putting it in my backpack, just like that. But I ended up getting this $1 bag. It's absolutely huge that I can put all my clothes in, which is great. And it's going to benefit me because when I go to Miami or if I go to do any other washing, I can just use that bag. Okay, so there was no seating available inside the shop. And I came out about and I'm looking around like where can I chill, where can I sit and I found this little cool area. Let's get straight into it. The Oreo one's going to be pretty heavy so let's start with the Wonka one. So supposedly it's a red velvet cookie. Let's see what the hype is about. It's not bad. Again, this isn't like a normal cookie. This is like a cookie sandwich. So in terms of the texture, I can't really say too much yet until I try the Oreo one. That one's pretty, pretty heavy. It's not an overwhelming sense of red velvet. That frosting in the middle creates a nice little dynamic. Now, let's try what crumble cookies is actually known for. The single cookie with the frosting and whatnot on the top. Pretty heavy in size. Feels pretty soft. Here we go. Hmm. Texture wise, they smash it. It's not too hard and it's not too soft. It's genuinely perfect texture. Sometimes you get it where it's completely rock solid and you bite into it and it's like and then sometimes you get it where you just bite into it and it all just melts everywhere. This one actually is perfect consistency. And I'm tasting a lot too. Okay, I'm gonna say it. Crumble cookies, the hype is real. I'm confident in saying raisin canes and crumble cookies live up to its uh, hype. Those are the two things that are actually really, really good that I've tried. Came back, took a dump. I don't know what this hair is, legit. Just ignore it. <laughs> this is like a pineapple hair. Fold up my clothes from the laundry. Now I'm gonna eat a little bit of this it's Malaysian food. I'm not quite too sure. Just I'm watching an interview. I'm only gonna eat like half or a quarter. Then after I finish my training, then I'll eat the rest of it. Comes with this little soy sauce thing too. Looks pretty good. Alright, spine session complete. I've got an extreme today. After this, I've got template. Depending on how I'm feeling body-wise, but I am feeling better body-wise because I got that Malaysian. I don't know if it's Malaysian food or whatnot. It was it was good. Made my body feel a lot more better. And then uh, during sparring as well, felt a lot more lighter, which is good. I don't feel as heavy as yesterday. Going through some of the motions, practicing some of the moves and techniques that I've been um, wanting to add to my game. Not so much grappling, more so striking. The only grappling that I did was initiating more on the single leg and uh, shooting it on the single leg and working off of that. It's good, but I need to train it up a little bit more. Trying to get used to grabbing the single and moving rather than grabbing the single and staying stationary. So right now I'm just watching Sean do his pads. It's pretty cool. Just like seeing if I can pick up the little little things here and there. I think the UFC camera crew right here. I'm just following, going through the motions. Nothing in, in particular that's like standing out absolutely crazy, but it's more live live pads. So the pad holder's got shin pads, knee pads. So as Sean's hitting the pads, he's hitting him back with some random stuff. And I'm assuming they got like some some cues and whatnot. I don't know when he throws the kick, maybe he goes cross across and whatnot because he's sliding back and forth and all. 
So it's a more live interactive um, pad work. What was the outline today? Today was, I think it was six or seven rounds, so roughly, I, I didn't even pay attention to the rounds, I didn't pay attention to the time. But the only thing is I missed one round because of the freaking Uber driver, but it turns out there was an NRL game, hence why I was late. Chavik was mad, a lot of people ended up being late. So we did a few rounds, followed by two specific training rounds, so one from front headlock, and then uh, other position with full guard. Top bottom, um, I think they were, I can't remember. Again, I didn't pay attention to the duration today, I just did the work. I was listening to Tony Ferguson do one of his interviews about David Rogers and whatnot. And he said he got to a stage where it was just like, he didn't ask any questions, he just did it. And that was the same thing as me today, he just didn't ask, did it. And again, I didn't go with any spastics today that tried to like go for my head. I made sure to get around him with Jordan. Jordan's grappling is actually pretty good, man. Very flowy style. I can't say that it's better than the 10 Planet people, but it's definitely very, very good MMA-wise. I got stuck on the bottom a lot with him. He was able to control me very, very well. I was trying to do my ability to scramble as much as I can using the reach around, around the back, and um, trying to fight up, uh, get in an upwards position as soon as my back or butt hit the ground. But again, he did a good job of controlling me. Watch Sean's last round of the pads. Then I'll go shower up, get dressed, ready, change, and then I hit the 10 Planet but. I also ended up changing my flight to one day after, so I'm gonna fly on the 17th instead of the 16th, so I can go to the UFC event because that's adamant. I've, I was given it a bit of deliberation, a bit of, bit of thought, and I'm like, bro, when am I ever gonna get the chance? When am I ever gonna get the chance? So I said, fuck it. We'll see how that goes. Hopefully, uh, I message my travel agent, Burhanabi, and uh, we'll get that sorted. Hopefully, I'm now at 10 Planet Vegas. I am watching the kids' class. I just don't want to record them because they are kids, but I'm trying to pick up. Um, how they run in the class, what they're teaching, how the kids are conducting themselves and whatnot. I would be tired. Mm. Right, session concluded. Smashed it. Actually, stayed till the very end. They didn't deport you yet? No, oh. not yet, brother. I've got good people like you looking yeah. after me. Welcome to America. Welcome. Let's go. <laughs> We've got the brothers like that just make jokes and they're good. It's a good vibe here. Good vibe at Temple uh, Vegas. I recommend you guys coming down, but legit, it was super good vibes. Good training in, solid training in. Last training session here, honestly. Um, I think I'm not going to do the UFC event because it's going to burn too much money. So it was good. Good vibes, good training, and uh, yeah, cool with them right there. All right, so that was a bit of a waste of time, not going to lie. After training, I couldn't get through to Delta. They didn't pick up my call and they didn't call back. So it was kind of ish on the way. Came to the airport, went to the Delta thing, and they ended up just saying basically the same thing as my travel agent because it was economy class or whatever. It would just get burned, I'd get no money back, and I'd have to pay for a completely new ticket. Now I'm thinking like, okay, 100 AUD, 200 AUD, something around there, yeah? Around 428 AUD, uh, 428 USD. Then think about, I've got to pay for another hotel on top of that, and not out of the hotel, which is 160 USD. That's like 1,500, 1,800 AUD without getting tickets to the UFC. Then there's a 200 USD, translates like 450 AUD, but it's basically like 2.2, 2.5K, no. That's, it's not that worth it, like to get it all changed, nah, nah, nah. So basically, um, just keeping everything the same. I'm a stingy dog bro, I need to save money. I've got at a stage here where I've like fully made it, you know, so all these little decisions and whatnot, little things, uh, making me more aware. Also, one more thing, really weird, I saw Super Sage Walker. Obviously didn't go up to him or anything like that, but size him up. Basically the same height as me, bro. Another ordinary guy. But he genuinely seems like how he does in the media as well. Just like, not goody two shoes, how do I describe it? Just, yeah, one of them. Where's he going? You guys see that shit? Little rats. Fucking rats. Rats coming around Vegas, bro. Strolling around. I know they're in New York and stuff, but in Vegas too. Bruh, yuck. So I made a quick stop to Walgreens. What did I get? The much needed journal. I had to buy a pen. And I'm like, I might as well buy a little bit of a nice pen. So it was $2 more. And then a quick little snack for the way back. Comes in these little bad boys. Smell test, not bad. These were $1.99, so gets the job done. Craving settled. So, one thing I want to quickly point out. My phone was on like 2%, so what did I do? I left it back at the hotel. I left it on charge, I got my wallet, got whatever I needed, and I started walking to Walgreens, because it's not that far, it's only like a 5 to 10 minute walk from me. What I realized is, obviously, by having the mobile on me, you feel a sense of nakedness. 
okay? Naked is in terms of, you obviously rely on, you've always got your phone on you and you always like touch it, touch it, you always go on it, when you walk you go on it. And there's a feeling of like, not contentness, but a sense of peacefulness, serenity in terms of being very, very present in, in the moment. Obviously when I've, I've even got my phone on me, I still try to make most of this, but it forces you into this element more of you just like honing the moment. Just really like looking at my surroundings, you know, like paying attention to different details and what I normally would rather than just looking straight down on my phone and walking. You know, sometimes we forget that, that we, we get distracted by these things so much that we, that it takes away from some of these beautiful moments. Even just like small things are like when I spotted that, that little rat in the, in the bush. You know, small things like that. I wouldn't have been able to see that if I was on my phone. Or maybe some people were interacting across the street and I wouldn't have been able to see them. So small things like that, I think it's just something that we should take note of more of. Hey, I just want to share another interesting fact. So after class, I called my Uber waiting for the Uber and I chopped it up with Marab a little bit. Chopped it up with Marab, the, uh, the, the Vali Shia, I don't know how to say his name. But I chopped it up with him a little bit, just asking him a few things. And uh, I'm like, oh, you're fighting Henry and Feb, yeah, you're fighting some Feb. And I was a bit inquisitive about his diet. And I was like, how many times a day do you train? He goes, brother, I train two, just two. I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. He goes, if you do more, too much. I'm like, yeah, it makes sense. If you guys had to guess how much weight he cuts, how much do you reckon he cuts? Do you reckon he has a dietitian? Brother. He goes, man, I'm old school. I'm like, what do you mean? He goes, I have no dietitian. I, I, I just eat normal and I do my cut in fight week. I'm like, okay, how much do you cut in fight week? He goes, 20 pounds. So that's roughly 9 kg. So Marab walks around close to 70 kgs, man. He says that he just does it old school, so he just... Drinks less water, does the normal necessities. I don't know, he's just said that he's super old school mentality. He doesn't need a dietitian because it's too much of a headache and they're just annoying in his own words. So that was interesting. So he trains two times a day, morning, night, and he cuts nine pounds to make weight. Forgot to ask him how much he reloads up to. That would have been a good question to ask, but I just got caught up in the heat of the moment. I just doodle on with some other stuff <laughs> and uh, ask him some other things. All right, we're all good to go. We are starting our day in sunny Vegas. It is roughly around 9.15 p.m. No, a.m., sorry. We're gonna just do one session today. So we're gonna go, I don't know if it's grappling, I don't know if it's striking, I don't care. I'm just gonna rock up. Even if no one's there, if there's no specific class and someone wants to do pads, I'll do pads. I just wanna get a bit of a sweat in because I know I'm not gonna train tomorrow. I definitely want to do two today and then when I get back perhaps maybe do my last bit of laundry and then from there we got Fury so we're gonna go it's like it's like their version of like our Hex or Eternal it's like their local show and I'm gonna try to go to the pre uh, weigh-ins for UFC so even if that means I rock up a little bit late to that Fury or LFA thing we'll rock up later <laughs> Alright, so I officially finished up here at the stream. Ended up doing a juicy class that was all level, so. You know. I thought there was meant to be a protein practice. Gordon was telling me. Some of the guys come in and do their grappling training, but there wasn't many of the pros here today. Chris Curtis came in. But it came in late. There was Brad Tavares running a class next door. But I don't know what class it was because it's not on the schedule. So I don't know if it was their own private training or whatnot. It was annoying because when there's super new people, they're very like static and like, Arr! they just hide their arms and they're very thing like that. They don't go for stuff so they don't give openings. So I was just pinning them. And then they came on the bag. Five minutes on the bag. Oh my god. It's the second type of yawns. But my time at Extreme is up, is up. And it's funny because like some, some of the people, they're like, um, when I was rolling with them afterwards, because honestly, they were pretty pretty green. And I wasn't going to hurt them, obviously. And they go, man, you in the UFC? I'm like, nah, man, I'm still way early in my career. What I've noticed is that, I guess sometimes some of the pros jump into these normal classes as well. But as, a, as an MMA nation, we're not that far off. Just when it comes to the elite in Jiu Jitsu, we are very far off. That's the session I should have done. Oh. 
But it's not on the schedule. There must be like an organized private training. One of the guys, he comes from downstairs, from the upstairs area that I was just at. He goes, Genghis Khan! Because every single time I meet someone new, I go, just think my name is Genghis Khan, Star Trek Khan, whatever helps you remember it. And it always sticks with them. And this guy goes, Genghis Khan, are you, are you training? I'm a band, I just finished training, but I didn't know there was a session up. He goes, yeah, 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 it's not on the schedule. I was like, damn, I wish I would have known I would have come. He goes, yeah, just come tomorrow. And then I'm like, bro, tomorrow I'm leaving, man. So um, turns out that session isn't actually on the schedule. It's just an organized session between the fighters and the coaches. But that looked like a good session. A picture of a lot of MMA people. And Andy Varela and his 10 Planet crew were there too. Adam Beagle was there as well. Damn, that was a session that I should have done. I think that was the session that Jordan was actually talking about, not the one that I did. But needs to say, I still got something in, at least. It just looked like a massive sweat fest, it looked like a vibe. Now, of course, because I'm flying to Miami, I'm not going to do too much tomorrow. So, I'm doing the last bit of my laundry from what I trained yesterday and this morning. Doing that bit of laundry, just over there. And then, um, we're going to try head to the UFC. <laughs> This whole time in my casino, or the place I'm staying at, I saw all these casinos. I never realized there's an actual like gymnastics thing on Bob, acrobatic circus show going on above the actual betting areas. Well, I'm not gonna lie, that's actually pretty hectic and unique. I like that, that's cool. Alright, lol, so I ended up coming to T Mobile thinking that the weigh ins and the presser was gonna be done here, but turns out it's all done at the MGM. So I'm quickly trying to make my way over to the MGM. And I made sure to come early because again, I think it's on the first come first surf basis. There's, there's a few people walking with um, Make America Great Again hats and the American flag, so it's pretty funny. There's a lot of Colby coming to support us. We're legit so random. As I'm on my way to the MGM, but there's like a little meet and greet for Andre. I love it. Nah, I'm alright bro, alright, thank you. Yeah, he just asked if I wanted to come inside. Nah, bro, it's Andre, I was bro. <laughs> if it was um, GSP, bro, I would've went in there. Nah, that's what it is, he's just, just in this bar. For like a little meet and greet. And that is exactly why I'm choosing to walk instead of catch another Uber. Okay, I'm not too really sure. I made a quick impulsive decision to dart right and just go straight into the actual MGM Grand as opposed to walking from the outside. And it seemed like the area that I was walking from was uh, where the actual fighters and the shuttle cars take them. There's all like poker stuff going on around here. There's a few people wearing UFC gear, but I don't know if they're staff or just fans. All right, after sweating a little bit of bullets, <laughs> I think I have found the entrance. Supposedly, it's a press conference followed by the official wings. Then once that's done, then I'm gonna head to the LFA event. Oh, Alright, so we had to go through a security check. Thankfully, they let me keep my water, but they made me tip my water into here. Hey, regardless, I'm so happy. They didn't make me piff out my water. They allowed me to keep it. Security check. Now we're going through the MGM Grand Concourse level. I have no idea what this is, but my main thing is to get some good seats. See, what are they trying to sell? Oh, the store, yes. Let me get some official merch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. let me get that okay. first. Today is at the gym. Oh, so you don't want my food now? Um, not to prep that I was um, eating healthy. Alright, I ended up getting myself. Because I missed out on the Amma Sarukin and Darush special t-shirt. So I ended up getting the UFC 296 one. Roughly 45 USD. But, I said fuck it. Created Might as well just get it. Exciting times ahead. Yeah. Thanks. UFC thanks you for your support. An old press conference making the impossible possible. Ontario, Canada. The UFC's first trip to Toronto, and we kick things off with a championship doubleheader. Coming to the stage, the challenger, hailing from South Africa, Drakus, still knocks, Duplessis. <laughs> to Australia in September and picked apart one of the greatest middleweights of all time. Reigning UFC middleweight champion, the one and only, Sean Strickland. Ready to continue cleaning out the division. Please welcome the UFC featherweight champion, Alexander the Great Volkanovsky. Marlon Chito. Honestly, as long as you're preparing properly. Oh, 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 oh. Any of you recently, oh, oh, oh. it'll be 
one of your easier fights. How can you say that when you're going up against one of the best in that division's history? And I have a question for you cunts. Why don't you guys like fucking Cheeto? Motherfucker with a status, trying to let dudes fuck his wife. Cheeto's a fucking stand-up motherfucker. It's make a murder. I got you again. fucking Cheeto, let's go. At least my dad didn't fuck me. So that was really cool to witness and see, man. Like, firstly, MGM Green in the back. Let me take a mad photo real quick. Okay, sweet. Um, yeah, that was pretty wild, man. So many notable names there. Justin Gaethje, Nell Boys, several other UFC fighters, Craig Jones. Even on the way out, I was, I can't remember it's famous. Even on the way out, Callum Walsh was walking in front of me. I was like, like he's sizing myself up against him. And then seeing how most of the people were conducting themselves, the weigh-ins and stuff, took a bit of notes. I think the most intense one was probably Casey O'Neill and that chick. Casey didn't even just blink an eye or look in another direction, she just went straight at a uh, person. But those fans that were next to me, they were funny as bro. Whenever they started cheering for Alex, I joined in. And you guys probably heard it when I joined in. <laughs> they were big O'Malley friends and they were just like, Oh, Mali. There was a few times where some famous individuals would acknowledge us because there was like four or five of them. They were all yelling, so collectively they were pretty loud. And whenever they yell and the individual looking in our direction, we'd all put our hands up. Like for example, after we did the oi thing with uh, Alex, when he came off the stage to do the in uh, face off, he was standing there. And then um, we were just like, oh, see, oh, see, oh, see. And I joined and I was like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, again. And he turned and he went like this. And then I put my hand up and I went like this too. So it was really cool. So I'm happy. And yeah, that my little gift to myself. If I'm not mistaken, 
the fight event um, in the palms right there. Let's check it out. Straight up, the canvas looks the exact same as Hex Fire series. Merchandise. Let's see. Yeah, dude. Just got finished now. What? Ten bucks. Alright. I see. Not bad. Not bad. This is pretty cool. Oh, what well, The octagon looks exactly like Hex Fire series. So that's pretty cool. Cup Swanson's here. I saw on her story Gilbert Burns is here too, but I haven't personally been able to sight him. Yeah, Michael Chiesa too. Yeah, lol. Michael Chiesa and Cup Swanson. Also, another person I spotted, Gilbert Melendez, I believe that's his name. Bro, girls taking photos are the funniest shit. This full stammer, bro. I was out the chicks doing like all their poses and stuff, but other ones just continuously spamming. That's funny. Miracle! It goes to stem for the national land. The iconic Pearl Theater! The guy in the red looks absolutely jacked. And the guy in the blue looks tall and rangy. I'm gonna put my money in. I want to stay red. Blue. Yeah, they brought it in the middle and the blue looks very hesitant in terms of not making any eye contact whatsoever with his opponent but red it looks fully zoned in so let's see what happens And then when that guy shot the double for some reason, he might have been in a threat. Caught him in that guillotine. But um, it seemed that when blue got flustered, when red just said fucking came forward and started swinging. Um, he got in tight dirty boxing. The guy, blue guy, instead of clinching up in tight clinching, he just level changed shot. Let his head expose. Well done. Good on him. I'm 0 for 1 so far. Call the stop to this fight. Three minutes, three seconds in the very first round, declaring the winner by Tampa to the guillotine choke, Trent Miller. Interesting one. The guy did like a T with his rear leg, but didn't touch the liver. But then the guy felt his liver. Unless maybe he did get his ribs, and um, he went down and then he got TKO'd. But it was an open stance battle. The guy kept blasting his rear kicks. Same, same game plan that I did against Owen. High kick, body kick, leg kick with the right, and then he set up with the good right team, and then finished him. That's a flyaway. Flyaway getting a finish, big deal. Winner, uh, GKO, Crazy J, Jordan Harris. Wow. Rock. Long story short, the blue guy was getting in a lot of trouble. He wasn't as good. The red guy was definitely better on the feet. So the blue tried to force the grappling a bit more. The guy in the red, Alfonso, just switched it up. Instead of flying there, knocked him out. The guy's still like loose in his feet, but that was fucking sick. I actually shamed with Alfonso this week. So I'm happy for him. I, I'm, I'm happy he got the win. But yeah, Alfonso's bitch. Hey. Perfect finish. He's still got flabs and all that for a while to wait. So I reckon he can cut a little bit more. But when I grappled him as well, he's a bit 
fair, he was cutting weight. I say he didn't feel too strong, but I'm not going to shoot on him. Congratulations to him. Congratulations to Alfonso. Oh, I'm so Another finish. LFA produces the fights. The fights. All of them finishes. Luke came out really wild, like street shit. Started seeing. It was cooking him really well. Paul uh, Ranger. Red was having a hard time finding his range, and he was a bit too defensive. Then Blues like just tried to like calm him down. So it seemed that when there was a fight going on in the octagon, there was actually another fight in the crowd. So the fact that I just took off, took off his shirt, shirt started throwing hands. America! Ladies and gentlemen, this is the LFA 173 main event of the evening! For those in attendance here in Las Vegas, Nevada, are you ready for war? <laughs> This is how this guy's gonna win the belt, but smart by him. It's just not easy dealing with the crowd as well. Tough crowd. Green <laughs> but bro, people legit left. They're, they're still walking out. A lot of people are getting up and just walking out. That's crazy. Even though it's a main event fight, people in focus. Yeah, people are just getting up and walking out. Look, I'll admit, from a fan perspective, it was a very boring fight, but it was a very technical work. He got the job done. Five rounds of championship MMA. We go to the judges' scorecards. Your winner by unanimous decision and new undisputed LFA middleweight world champion. Just look at this beast of a car, holy crap, yes, that is me. <laughs> I don't even know what this is, man. Bull Chase's Extreme Sports Classics, I have no idea. This thing is huge. Right, whilst I wait on my Uber, <coughs> I've got to stop by Walgreens, and I've got myself this little snack. Puffing. It says we spin chewy caramel into a little cup, drop in a whole hazelnut, cover it with chocolate hazelnut filling, and top it with a delicious drop of chocolate. ASMR. Lol. You ready? I have no idea. It's interesting. It starts off really sweet for like one second and then you just get a hit of the nut, of the hazelnut. 